Hello and welcome. I'm Tracy Harding and this is another one of my book vlogs. I am doing a book vlog this month on Being in the Field, which is the first book of the Celestial, no, not Celestial, <laughs> The Triad of Being, and it is the seventh book in the Ancient Future series. It was published in 2009. And it's out on audio as well as in hardcover. Now, I thought I was heading on into like a whole new series with this book. And I got on board this spaceship and I'm walking around and recognizing all the crew. It was like, oh my God. So as far as the question of where did all the characters come from, they came from my last two trilogies. They'd reincarnated into a whole new universe. So it was a whole new ball game, whole lot of different rules, but still big fun. So where did the concept come from? The concept came from reading Lynn McTaggart's book, The Field and the Intention Experiment. And all of a sudden, rather than having to use esoteric terms, which were um, very, like quite archaic in some cases, when you're talking about Blavatsky and Alice Bailey, I mean, you're talking about, you know, the beginning of the, the 20th century and they were speaking a very different language back then. And now we had quantum physics coming in and saying the same thing, but in terms, in modern day terms that we could relate to, that we could understand. And suddenly all the things I'd suspected throughout my investigations through my books, even though they are fiction, there is a lot of truth wound into them. And so being in the field was my attempt to meld those two things together because I could see the parallels between, um, you know, theosophical esoteric doctrine from, uh, you know, the beginning of the 20th century and the quantum physics that they were talking about now, or at least the quantum theory, I could understand and relate them very much. And I think that kind of put me in a unique position to put that in a science fantasy book that I could, uh, you know, bring out all those new theories like healing the past, which I'm going to be talking about a bit later on, and um, which was an experiment that Tori did, but a whole lot of other concepts too about, you know, vib vibration and frequency and that, you know, matter is um, manipulated by the observer, you know, it is subject to I think that's the best way to put it, that matter is subject to the observer. You know, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it really fall? Mm. No? <laughs> so with the research, really, I mean, um, I'm, I'm going to go and talk about um, healing the past in a little while and you're just going to hear me raving about Lynn McTaggart. This may as well be the Lynn McTaggart show, this particular book vlog, because basically um, when I read Being, um, sorry, not Being in the Field, what was it? It was The Field. Yes by Lynn McTaggart and you're going to see these books a lot in this <laughs> vlog and I know a lot of you have probably investigated them by now because I rave and rave and rave about her work and the intention experiment um, and Lynn's got a whole lot of vlogs online I think I put a link to them further uh, along um, I don't know I've been doing this in pieces I've got so much going on but I think I have anyway so basically her books and, you know, my good old psychic encyclopedic dictionary, you've heard me talk about that one before. It got a good workout. And I think the other book, the only other book that really lent, or at least if it didn't come in this book, it, it comes in pretty soon, is Science in the Akashic Field by um, Irvin Laszlo. He was, oh, amazing book, really beautiful, so especially when talking about, like, photons and about light. Like, in the beginning, there was light 
and yet the sun and the moon were not created until the sixth day, you know, according to the, the biblical text, you know. So what was this light they were talking about? And he's talking about, you know, that being, um, you know, this ether, this etheric light, the eternal, um, internal light of the universe, of the cosmos. So it's a very beautiful book. So that too was um, helpful when it came to this series. So that brings us to underlying themes and reader questions. And um, I don't really have to talk about locations because I had that planets video at the beginning of the show. So that kind of covers the terrain that we cover in this book, all those different planets, which are a lot of fun getting to know. Um, and then with the characters, well, we all know where they came from. Well, if you've read the first two trilogies, you know where they came from and why it all links up and how we start crossing universes before too long. I had no idea when I started writing this book that it was going to start, you know. I mean, I didn't even... I, I thought time travel was enough, you know. And then when we went into outer space, I thought, oh, well, awesome, you know. I've always wanted to go into outer space. But then when we start crossing universes, lots of them, it was just, oh, my God. Seriously, it's like Stargate's on steroids, isn't it, really? <laughs> anyway, so reader questions um, and underlying themes. So we'll start with the questions because that kind of leads me into our underlying themes for this um, this book. And first, these are all from Gavin this week, and I know that there's people out there that really love Gavin's questions, so <laughs> let's go. Okay, so... In the first question, Gavin's asking about the origins of the name of the being of the field. He said that he um, it gave him shivers, um, and he thought there there might be a sonic attached. And um, was this a conscious or a subconscious thing? Um, well, actually, uh, when I asked what its name was, that's what it told me. Are going, oh my God, how do I spell that? And how do I break it down so people can say it? I had a feeling it wasn't going to be a short thing. But obviously, um, Azizel is, um, you know, the the head of the Grigori. That was his name. So I felt that it started with his name, or their name, because they were um, kind of the ones all the other Gregory were following. So I thought that might have been taken from their higher self. So Azio Mindus Comraducci, that was the name. And I don't know why it sounds Italian, but it does. <laughs> so he's an Italian ethereal architect. <laughs> that makes sense, doesn't it? Really, the Italians are all about architecture. So, um, so maybe, yeah, cosmic architecture, it's the same thing. They've got that same vibe. Um, very um, mace. <laughs> anyway so yeah it basically it just told me its name and that sonic I mean it does have a really nice flow about it I don't know what it is either but I quite like it so yeah it got used um, the next question was about um, Khalid Mansour um, he wanted to know about the development of this character oh, I just saw, I just kept seeing, um, oh my goodness, what's his name? The actor, he's not with us anymore. Oh, Alan Rickman. You know how he was in The Sheriff of Nottingham. Oh my God. I could, <laughs> like in, yeah, in Robin Hood, he just came in as that character, cleared, and he was just so obnoxious, like seriously. And I just loved him. Um, he did just walk in. It wasn't a premeditated thing. His whole character arc was a surprise to me. Um, but of course it had to happen because the Chosen find a better way of doing things. They, they love their enemies because their enemies teach them the most. That's what they're there for. And Khalid is certainly that enemy, uh, 
and interesting that he has a turnaround and um, you know suddenly he's making them look bad <laughs> you know by the end of it so it's kind of it's all these characters it's about their spiritual evolution not in an airy fairy way but dealing with very real matters and very real gripes and arguments and situations that you know take a lot of thinking through to karmically do the correct thing and um, you know that's what my books all about that's why people love them because you know you can go in there and um, you're gonna learn so I I learn things from my books still from my characters they've taught me so much and um, now I'm starting to do seminars and teach other people what they've taught me um, just to go deeper into uh, what I've learned basically because I've accumulated a hell of a lot of esoteric knowledge over the last 25 30 years that I've been um, looking into all things weird and wonderful and I love talking about it and I love seeing other people have breakthroughs and epiphanies and um, that helps with their work and their everyday life but anyway getting off track the last question that Gavin had to ask was um, that I, he said that I seem to grasp the concepts of the field um, by Lynn McTaggart. I've shown that book before. I'll put it up here. Um, that I, I grasped all those concepts, and he wanted to know if I'd been introduced to Lynn's material well before I started writing this series. Absolutely, because it inspired this series. But the thing was, too, is that after I'd finished writing Gene of Isis, um, that was a standalone book to me, and. I had begun, I discovered the field and read the field and I was really inspired and I'd started piecing together being in the field, uh, like the planets and the, uh, you know, what the universe was like because they're very anti-psychic there, really psychic paranoid because my other universe, I've got all these immortals that are psychics, of course, so when they start crossing universes, it gets really interesting. Um, but yes, yeah, psychics are persecuted in this particular universe and so I had started working on this and I um, went into HarperCollins to pitch it with my agent to pitch this new trilogy and they were already waiting with an offer because they wanted me to do make Gene of Isis a trilogy because they felt there was a lot more material, material. and there was only um, the material the, there was a lot of conspiracy theory and stuff oh my god it was so dark the places I had to go um, to get through those two books I had never planned them um, and they're the first the, the only books I think that I've ever written that I didn't plan on writing and so they took a lot the Dragon Queens and not only that I was personally I was going through a lot at that time and so it was I can't read the Dragon Queens <laughs> um, I, but you know people love that trilogy and it was very very heavy esoteric uh, work which I'll, I'll go into when I do a vlog on that but uh, it was that I was reading and um, so it was a lot a lot of processing really dark things you know I was researching esoteric stuff and um, there was a guy that was doing work on junk DNA and it was getting pulled down off the internet and spread by people this information um, that I was trying to read and then I was getting these things shooting up about the CIA looking for this guy and I'm going oh my god um, I've got to be onto something here right <laughs> and uh, yeah so that was it was a really scary thing researching that book anyway um, but back to being in the field um, so yes I actually um, did well before so uh, when I was going into uh, the Dragon Queens and the Black Madonna the Black Madonna you get hints of being the the, um, the field by Limit Tag bleeding through into the Black Madonna too in the exercise with the plant where they put the lie detector on the the plant and it's reacting to you know telepathic thought and stuff so uh, that was in um, the field and then the experiment that I lent on for being of the field was actually in the intention experiment but I'm going to tell you all about that in this video in being of the field Taryn conducts an amazing healing experiment when from the Astro Marine Institute in space, she projects her intention to heal to patients back in a hospital on her home planet of Maladan. 
This experiment and some of the equipment Taryn used in her research were all modelled on the amazing scientific investigations documented by Lynn McTaggart in The Intention Experiment and her earlier book, The Field. Chapter 11 of The Intention Experiment, entitled Praying for Yesterday, documents the research of Leonard Lebovici, professor of internal medicine in Israel and expert on hospital-acquired infections. He set out to conduct a study on how prayer would affect nearly 4,000 people who had developed septus while in hospital. He used a randomizer to sort the patients into two groups, and no one knew who was being remotely healed and who wasn't. The professor was looking for three aspects of the outcome between the prayed for and the not prayed for groups. They were, one, the number of deaths, two, the length of stay in hospital, and three, the duration of the fever. There were fewer deaths in the prayed for group, but not enough to really statistically be significant. However, there were major differences between the two groups when it came to the duration of their hospital stay and fever. Those prayed for got better much faster than the controls, and this was not a new breakthrough. The twist in this case was that the patients were in hospital between 1990 and 1996. The praying was carried out in the year 2000, between four and 10 years later. Boom. This proved that scientific method could not be used to explain subjective things like the power of intention and that the subjective is not bound by the constraints of time as we understand it. For more information on this experiment and mind-blowing discoveries, read anything by Lynn McTaggart or catch her new podcast on YouTube and iTunes, or both. So just a quick word on the underlying themes. I mean, further to that experiment that went on in the book, there was this book was really an ode to all those scientists that have been doing work in the quantum world, um, bringing through their research on photons and how plants communicate and how all of nature communicates through this, you know, never-ending microscopic field of molecules. It all breaks down to the, the same stuff and really we're just we're just creating all this. It's not really here. And interesting, when science says that because you know people think you're crazy when you go no this is not really here this is not happening Monty Python fans anyway um, <laughs> I think if anyone was to ask me what is God I would say it's a quantum field of molecules it's what George Lucas was getting at when he spoke about the force it was probably what Jesus was hinting at when he talked about um, you know the secret of creation being smaller than a mustard seed I just wanted to be able to bring through this research that um, these quantum scientists had been doing about this invisible field that is all around us, you know, zero point field theory, um, that, in, you know, this field that influences us, we influence it, and um, how we are all beings of that field. So that rather neatly leads me into the audio excerpt for this month from Being of the Field. It's read by Nikki Talako and um, written by me. And many thanks to Belinda Audio for letting me use this. After achieving eight different degrees at the University of Espinosa on Maladan, Taran had finally scored a research visa and a six-month stay on the esteemed land, sea and space vessel that had been the brainchild of Professor Lucien Gervais. Gervais, whose explorations of space Taran had long admired, was captain of the mobile institute that he had designed. 
The professor had named the craft the Astro Marine Institute Explorer, or AMI, after his wife, Amy Gervais, who was a well-known marine biologist herself. The AMI project worked in cooperation with the University of Espinisa, and their home base office here on Maladan was located on campus. Amy's earthbound operations and research centre were run by Luchin's older brother, Swithin Gervais, who raised the finance to fund the Amy project. Taran thought it a damn shame that Luchin Gervais was a happily married man, as besides being a brilliant scientist, writer and inventor, he was remarkably good-looking, charismatic and, from all accounts, a pleasure to work with. One last briefing and Taryn would be getting the lowdown on Gervais from a personal perspective. She couldn't wait to be off this overpopulated planet and exposed to the vast wilderness that space and the planets of the neighbouring star systems had to offer. Taryn's job on the mobile observatory, to study and advise on space anomalies, had been specifically created for her because of a recent discovery that those in the know at the Astro Marine Institute headquarters on Maladan were not disclosing to anyone outside the presidential office and the dean of the university on Espinisa. It was widely rumoured that most of Amy's major discoveries had not been made public as yet. The Mobile Institute had only been in space for five years, although the project had been in existence for closer to ten. Apart from the construction of the Mobile Institute, Amy also built a planet-bound port and maintenance dock for the Institute, its recon vessels and its interstellar pod transport system. Taryn was dying to get on that vessel and be made privy to Amy's discoveries herself. She'd have top-level security clearance soon. Well, top-level clearance so far as astro-marine research went, and that's what she was interested in. The majority of Taryn's peers and teachers over the years had questioned the value of the subjects she chose to investigate. She had studied everything from genetics and cell communication to quantum theory, astrophysics and extrasensory perception in hopes of proving her interdimensional field theory. Taryn was convinced there was an ocean of microscopic vibrations connecting everything in the universe. This ocean, or field, influenced and was in turn influenced by every single particle within creation. The field could control you or you could control it, unconsciously or consciously, for better or for worse. The flora and fauna of the natural world was instinctually connected to the field and utilised it unconsciously to their advantage, especially pack animals and those that moved in schools, a large majority of human beings in Taran's day and age who lived in high-rise cities had lost their connection with the natural world and the macrocosm. Most like to believe that life was a string of fated events because in this belief they need not take responsibility for their own sickness, misfortune or misguided acts. It could all be blamed away on others or circumstance but not the self. So, of course... All the serious scientists and scholars at the University of Espinisa had found the concept that they created their own reality and were responsible for everything that happens to them in life a bit confronting. They had ridiculed her theories that all life was telepathically connected, that disease is caused by emotional and mental imbalance and that it might be possible to influence the past. Intriguingly enough, after ten years, her peers on the research funding board at the University of Espinisa had stopped laughing and had been questioning her about her research with some interest of late. Then, out of the blue, Taryn was invited to apply for a grant and a visa to study on board Amy. This was Taryn's greatest dream come true. She'd never bothered to apply for a visa before now, knowing her work was not regarded seriously Taryn strongly suspected she'd be rejected. Now the heads of Amy on Maladan were offering her a job. So that's about it for this vlog. I hope you've enjoyed it. This will be my last vlog for just a little while because I'm going to just step back from um, all these creative pursuits and do some more uh, writing because um, I've kind of got to over the halfway mark of the book I'm writing and it's wanting to come out now. And, you know, these 
ah, they're a lot of work to put together so um, yeah I'm just gonna put them on the everything on the back burner for a little while and just focus on getting this next book out because it's gonna be amazing um, I think that's about all thank you so much for supporting this channel um, you know if you haven't watched all the others then please go uh, in watch my tutorials or you know book vlogs or there's writing mentoring and um, you know book trailers all sorts of things so go have an explore if you need um, if you would like to a mentor session um, you can go to allthingstracy.com or my um, little bits and pieces are down below I also do personal readings just life coaching um, I've got a seminar coming up real soon called um, mastering your reality that'll be in May if you're in Brisbane and um, what else uh, I'm on patreon if you'd like to support my work there um, you can also get mentor like regular um, personal readings and mentoring sessions through uh, Patreon now and lots of other bits and pieces as well and uh, yeah I think that's about it thank you so much and I'll see you again when I get on the other side of you know finishing a book um, bye